Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video I'm going to look at the last deck from Battle for Zendikar, uh, which is Zendikar's Rage, which is a red and green deck. Uh, let's take a look at the deck list. Uh, we've got 21 creatures, 7 sorceries, 4 instants, 2 enchantments, 26 land, uh, mana curve off to the side there. Let's just dive in and start looking at the cards. So, impossible to go back to Zendikar without doing landfall, uh, you know, an incredibly popular um, mechanic, so yeah, it's it's back here in Battle for Zendikar, um, mostly in red and green, it was kind of like the two colour draft archetype ready for red green. So uh, yeah, that's what the deck's pretty much all about, is just ramping into a bunch of lands and using those land drops to um, pump up your pump up your creatures, so yeah. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, so the foil face rate is Oran Reef Hydra, uh, so four and double green for a 5-5 five, five trample, so like fairly decent stats right off the bat. It has landfall, uh, so whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on it, but if that land was a forest, you put two counters on it instead. Um, so yeah, this is just very, I think, straightforward. It's a big creature with trample. Um, nice that it always has trample. It's not like getting trample is like dependent on the landfall. Always has it. Um, yeah, and it's just going to grow as you you know as you keep playing land which you will in this deck you'll always to search up land um so yeah i think this is i mean it's very straightforward it's maybe a little boring because it's just a big creature it doesn't really do anything else but like i don't know do you need it to do anything else it's just a big threatening creature it's um yeah i guess it's fine uh, we have a single Marassa Ranger, uh, 3 in a green for 3-3. Three, three. Um, land for whenever a land enters the battlefield under control, you may you may pay 3 in a green if you do put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Marassa Ranger. Not crazy about this, just because the um, that activation cost is quite high, like 4 mana, um, and you, this actually stands out as an odd card to me, just because it's the only like creature with a landfall trigger that requires you to spend extra mana, um, which... I always feel like the the best thing about landfall, uh, you know, creatures with landfall is that you're getting you're getting the benefit of playing a land, which is actually play spells. Um, but you know, just playing the land is enough to you know give you a bonus. Like you shouldn't have to sink extra mana into it. Um, so yeah, I'm not crazy about this because it does feel very weird. Like if it was just, I don't know, if it was just very you know kind of a bit bland. If it was just kind of like a lesser Oran Reef Hydra, like oh, when you know landfall, it gets a plus one plus one counter. Sure. Um, but yeah, this this it just feels weird to me that it's I say it's a landfall creature, and its landfall trigger requires spending more mana. It just feels very weird to me. Um, but I mean, it's a what a it's like a four four mana for a three three with I mean well, at this point in the game that's actually kind of bad for green now. So um, yeah, can't can't recommend the uh, Marassa Ranger. I think yeah, not not wonderful. I think. Uh, then we've got two tumbling geopedes, uh, two and a red for a 3-2. Um, landfall, whenever a land ends the battlefield under control, it does one damage to each opponent. I th uh, from what I remember, this is the only landfall effect on, on creatures, at least in the deck, which doesn't rely on just getting like, counters or like increasing power and toughness anyway. Um, which is, like I feel like, actually a bit of a shame. Um, it's kind of a missed potential, I think, to have a bunch of kind of like fun landfall triggers, like just doing... Because we saw that back in the original Zendikar, where like landfall triggers could be anything from... like. Um, you know, like drawing cards or like untapping stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just kind of fun like that. And in here, it's just all kind of like increased power toughness, which is fine. It's red green aggro. Um, basically, turns every land you play into yeah, you know, like a board wide pump spell, pretty much. But um, yeah, it just would have been nice to see some some different effects like this one. Um, yeah, as is, I think it's actually I think it's fairly good. Like a three mana for a three two that can just keep constantly damaging opponents. So you get two of them out, then that's like quite a lot of pressure, I think, to just keep chipping away the extra one damage. So yeah, I like this. Um, then a bunch of green creatures, these are basically all the same <laughs> creatures of different sizes. So two snapping gnarled, uh, two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, when you uh, landfall, you get, it gets plus one plus one turn to turn. Territorial Baloth, this is a reprint from original Zendikar, four and a green for a 4-4. Four, four. Its landfall to get is to get plus two plus two to turn to turn. And a single scythe leopard, a uh, single green mana for a 1-1. One, one. It's landfall to get plus one plus one to turn turn. So potentially you can attack with this on turn two for like two damage, which is which is fine, but you know, I feel like this would quickly quickly drop off. Um but yeah, these are I say these are all basically the same creature, just at different sizes. But yeah, I mean they're straightforward at least. Um and then we got pretty much the same for red as well. So we've got a single Valicate Predator, two and a red for a two two, um, gets plus two plus two on landfall. So yeah, it's kind of like a smaller uh, territorial Baloth, um, a single McKindy Slide Runner, one in red for a two one with Trample. So at least it has Trample, which is nice. Um, again, like I said with the Orion Reef Hydra, um, gets plus one plus one on Landfall. That's fine. 
Um, and then this was the um, the two color like signpost uncommon uh, for for draft archetypes. Um, the Grove Rumbler two, a red and a green for three three with trample, and its land four is get plus two plus two turn ten. So like all very straightforward. You play lands and they get bigger, and then you swing with them. It's red green aggro, which I feel like we've actually not had. I don't know just. <laughs> <laughs> like a really kind of straightforward red green aggro for a, for a while actually. I know we just had dragons of Tarkir. There was the red green deck in there, but that felt I don't know that felt a bit more. I don't know not as straightforward as this one. That felt a bit like kind of fiddly to work with. This is this is a lot more easy to work with. You you just play lands, ramp up, and attack with big creatures. It's not all landfall creatures though. Um, so we've got two Oran Reef Invokers, uh, one in a green for a 2 2. It's really nice these invokers came back. I think they're only in green and red though. Um, but they, because you know, when you play landfall, you want to ramp up to a bunch of lands. So it's nice to have these um, invoker creatures that, you know, can then use that mana you've you've uh, you've ramped up into. Um, so you can spend eight just to give it plus five, plus five, and trample turn 10, which is all right, I suppose. You've got eight mana lying around, and, you know, worse things to do with it, I suppose. Uh, and then two Valakut Invokers, two in red for a 2-3. Um, you can spend eight to make it deal three damage to tight creature or player, which, again, is like, it's expensive, but if you've hit eight mana and, you know, there are worse things to spend it on, you know. Um, some really, like a repeatable lightning bolt effect is is not awful. Um, and then this feels very out of place. The Rot Shambler, uh, just one in the green for a one one. Whenever whenever another creature you control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Um, like it's not terrible. It just feels kind of out of place in the deck, I suppose. Like, just having like one of them. Um, there's definitely there's a deck in the next set which uses this a lot better. Like it's all themed around kind of sacrificing the Eldrazi Scions. Like in here, it doesn't feel like it's it's meeting its full potential because like you don't you've got big creatures like they're not dying as often. You're not kind of you haven't got sacrifice effects. So this feels like it was kind of here just to fill space a little bit. Um, we've got two Lava Step Raiders, one red mana for a 1-2, and uh, you can spend two and a red to give it plus two plus naught until end 10. So yeah, it's just another way of um, using all that mana you're probably generating. Um, and then two Brute Hunter Worms, three and a green just for a 4-3. Yep, just a vanilla 4-3. Again, it, it, it's fine. It's fine, isn't it? So the other random deck is Indissus Renewal, uh, so five and a green. Uh, you set your library up to three basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library and you gain seven life. So triple rampant growth is is all right you know that's that's three land for triggers uh for your stuff potentially four if you've played a land in the same turn you're, you're casting this um like so a lot of ramp and also a bit of life gain as well which is um i think this is like a fairly solid rare to have and it you know it's, it's doing what the deck wants it to do which is like just get out a bunch of land um like ramp up um you know get a bunch of uh multiple land for triggers in a turn yeah i think it's a solid rare to include um, and then we've got two Seek the Wilds, one in the green. Uh, you look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a creature or a land from amongst them, put it into your hand, and the rest on bottom of your library in any order. Yep, so find a land if you desperately need it for triggering landfall or otherwise, more likely or not. I think you're just going to you know, pick the best creature and use it as kind of a limited um, like tutor effect. So yeah, I think this is this is fine. Two of those. Uh, two Sylvan Scrying, one in the green. Uh, you just search your library for a land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Um, so this can get any land, not just basic land. Um, so yeah, that's that's perfectly okay. This is a reprint from um, uh, Mirrodin, I think Mirrodin block, original Mirrodin, um, like Fifth Dawn, I think, which is which is something. There you go. Um, and then a single natural connection, two in a green. Um, it's basically rampant growth, but instant speed. You search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle your library. Um, yeah, it being instant actually really matters because then it's um, with all your land for stuff, it's then basically a combat trick. So that that's again something to consider. Um, and then a single swell of growth. It's a real shame there's only one of them in here because I think this could have really benefited from having more than one of these. Um, so one in the green, uh, target creature gets plus two, plus two, turn turn, and you put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Um, so yeah, definitely, again, I mean, it's a combat trick anyway because it's, it's an instant speed pump spell, but also putting the land... Um, uh, again, not a basic land, just any land onto the battlefield. Um, not tapped either, which is kind of a thing. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty good because, again, you, you can get uh, landfall triggers at instant speed, like in the middle of combat. So this could potentially do a lot for any two mana. Um, a real shame there's only two of those. Yeah, oh, two of those, one of those. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's all right. Um, and then we have the two retreat in charms retreat uh, retreat to chasm do which is two in the green um, has landfall whenever land ends the battlefield under control you choose one you either put a plus one plus one counter on type creature or you gain two life um, both those effects are okay the plus one plus one counter is option I think is 
you're the one you're going to be choosing most of the time. But yeah, there's times where like two life matters. So yeah, this is fine. And then uh, retreat to Valakut, two and a red. Um, when a land enters the battlefield under control, choose one target creature. That's plus two, plus not turn ten, or target creature can't block this turn. Um, again, those are both uh, pretty good options, like either boosting power or getting a big blocker out of the way. Yeah, I think both of these are, are perfectly good. Um, and then a bunch of stuff that doesn't really care about landfall but it does care about having a lot of mana and lands i suppose um so single rolling thunder this is a great reprint to have um this is all the way back in um tempest block i think uh so x and two red does x damage divided as you choose amongst any number of target creatures and or players um what fireball should have always been in my opinion um because i don't i think fireball is massively overrated um but yeah rolling thunder i think is is great it's the fact you can spread out x however much you want so yeah and you're ramping up so much x can be pretty high um single stone fury three in double red uh does damage to target creature equal to the number of lands you control um at instant speed that's not nothing um because presuming you know you get five lands out so is you know let's say you got a minimum of five lands out when you cast this that's five damage at instant speed that's not nothing you know again um again shame there's only one of them i know i know it's expensive but like could it could do with a bit of um extra burn in here i think um, and then a single sure strike, this is just a pretty solid combat trick, one red, to give something plus three, plus naught on first strike to unturn, that is fairly significant, um, you know, works good either attacking or defending, yeah, it's good, just really solid, again, shame there's only one of them. Um, and then a single reclaiming vines, two and double green, uh, destroy target artifact enchantment or land, um, so this pretty much always has a target, um, this is this is kind of a downgrade of the classic creeping mold, because um, creeping mold could hit... I think it's like non-creature permanence, I think, maybe. Or or Bramble Crush, I might be thinking. Um, but yeah, this is fine. It's just a utility card, isn't it? It's just it's a shame it's a bit expensive and a bit slow. But at least it can always hit land if you desperately want to do that. Uh, so we have a single Blighted Woodland. Uh, so taps to give you one colours. When you spend three in the green, tap it and sacrifice it. You search your library up for two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. This is pretty good, I think. This is one of the better of the Blighted Lands. Um, just being like double rampant growth is pretty good. It, like gives you Because you can play it early on, it still gives you colourless mana. But then when you hit four you know turning one land into two is is pretty solid i think so yeah this is this is pretty good again would have been nice to have more than one of those and again it's um another way of getting lands out instant speed to trigger all the landfall stuff so yeah pretty good uh and then do and then two fertile thicket ends the battlefield tapped gives you green um when it ends the battlefield you may look at the top five cards of your library reveal up to one basic land card from amongst them put that card on top of your library and the rest on the bottom in any order there's so many like land searching abilities in this deck it's it's kind of crazy um this is this is fine again just make sure you're going to get a land um you know, on top of deck next turn it's a shame the rest kind of get shuffled away to the bottom of the deck um but yeah it's okay and then three Evolving Wilds, fantastic to have three of them in here. Again, it's another way of just getting lands out at instant speed to you know, get all the landfall triggers. Um, I know I've said it loads of times, but yeah, it is pretty cool. That's that's an option. And then 10 Forests and 10 Mountains. So there you go. So let's talk about what could have been. Um, overall, I think it's okay. I, you know, like I said, the I think the... Um, some of the landfall triggers are kind of bland because it was just, you know, oh, we'll get plus one, plus one to turn turn, or, you know, just plus two, plus two. Like, nothing super exciting, I think. Um, I think let's mm, let's talk about maybe an alternate rare. Aqu uh, Aquam Hellkite was here as well. This is basically like the red version of the Hydra um, in the fact that it has a landfall ability that gets stronger if you play, like, a land that, you know, generates a colour that's aligned with. So Aquam Hellkite is uh, four and double red for a four, four flyer, which is, you know, okay. Uh, whenever land ends the battlefield under control, um, it does one damage to target creature or player, so nice, it can just ping for anything. But if that land is a mountain, it does two damage to that creature or player instead. So every land bit you know being just a bit of direct damage is pretty good um it would have been nice to have the hydra and this in the deck i think that would have been that would have been okay um and then as just a generic big creature say you're ramping up so much plated crusher um like yeah it's seven mana it's triple green but like you've got so much land searching in the deck and this is like it's seven six of trample and hexproof so like it's a big big threat to deal with um because you know it's obviously can't be targeted by removal it's got trample yeah this is this is really solid like um would have been nice to have this in here i think um definitely instead of like that um the was it the rot mushroom thing yeah well i mean the rot fungus which i said doesn't really fit in here at all um, and then let's also talk about Earthen Arms. Not specifically the card, but like the mechanic that it's got. Uh, so Earthen Arms is just one and a green, and you just put two plus one plus one counters on a on a permanent. That's fine. Um, but it has this awaken ability, which is like 
just it's in this set only and it's not in the next set it's not in um oath of the gate watch which is a shame because it was um there was a lot of cards with awaken and like it was kind of like the white blue archetype and you could have had kind of an interesting deck with it i think so awaken is you can pay the spells awaken cost um you get the effect but then you also like basically animate a land and turn it into an elemental creature and it gets plus one plus one counts on it so you could you know put two plus one plus one counts on another creature and also you've turned a land into a um you know, a four four creature as well, or you just put all the counters on a on a single um on a single land, making it into a six six. So yeah, it's just um Awaken wasn't really in red and green that much. I think maybe one or two cards. But as I say, it's just um it was mostly in white and blue, which is interesting that you know white blue had this kind of theme of animating lands, which is not something they you know typically do. And um yeah, just a shame that kind of wasn't a deck. Um yeah, but then again, I don't know what you'd kind of take out for it, like out of the um out of the five we've looked at. Um, they're all I think they're all pretty good. So I don't know what you would have cut for the uh the awakened deck. But um yeah, just thought I wanted to talk about it because it only shows up in this set because um in the next set it does the um the thing where kind of a lot of you know um mechanics get abandoned, new ones get bought in. Uh, so overall, yeah, I think this one, it's, I mean, it's fairly solid. It's red, green aggro and it's landfall. Um, I like both those things. Um, yeah, it's just, it feels very solid. It doesn't feel massively too exciting. I think it's got, it went actually a little bit overboard with the, um, land searching effects. Uh, like there's a lot of kind of, you know, like rampant growth land tutoring effects in here. And like, I just think probably needed more like um like combat tricks or like burn or something because it does feel like it's it's kind of too hyper focused on getting the lands out and um you know because not all the creatures in here have landfall triggers there is a chance you'd just be playing this deck and you only get like one or two of the landfall creatures and then you're searching up a bunch of land um really for no massive benefit i suppose but yeah i overall i think it's pretty solid um but yeah i'd like to hear people's opinions on this one uh, if you want to if you've got any comments or thoughts or stories or opinions about the deck or any of the cards in it stick a comment below i'd like to hear what people's opinions on the awaken mechanic was like would you have liked to see a white blue intro pack with like awaken as the theme that would have been pretty cool maybe um but yeah we're done with battle for zendikar now so we're going to move on uh to the next set oath of the gate watch and uh we'll, we'll pick that up next time but until then thanks for watching and listening and have a great day